Hello, everyone. Welcome to Replicon and welcome to this session. I hope you've had an amazing time so far. This session is for teachers specifically. We just announced that Teams for Education is now free for all educators. So we are so excited that we can do that for all of you. My name is Brittany and I work with educational partnerships here at Replit. And I am so excited to have David Morgan as our new teacher success manager. Seriously, he's amazing. Like you're gonna learn something from him every time. It's so true. Um, so we're gonna get started in just a minute. Any questions you have, feel free to put them in the Q&A so we don't miss them. We wanna make sure we answer all of your questions. In the top of the chat, I have linked a REPL if you wanna join us in that REPL. I'm going to talk just a little bit about what is REPLIT. Um, for those of you that might be new to REPLIT or new to coding, I wanted to give you just a little background. So if you wanna join me in that link, you are welcome to. So first you might ask, what is REPLIT? Well, REPLIT is a social browser-based IDE that allows you to host, and start coding projects. No download, no setup, and you can do it from any device, which is just so powerful and amazing. So with your REPLIT account, you can simply click create and you can create a REPL. There are over 50 languages that you can choose. We have templates, Nix packages, which hopefully you just learned about already, which is just amazing. So if you're in this REPL with me, I see a lot of you are in there. That's wonderful. Just wanted to do a little brief demonstration. This is a REPL. So you have your file tree, you have your text editor, and then you have your preview pane, and then your console and your shell. I like to think of REPLIT as Google Docs for coding. Um, to people I speak with that aren't maybe Super technical, that's my answer I like to give. You can see who is in here with you. You can send an invite link, which is amazing, just like you would in a Google Doc. You can send a link to someone. Um, I see you guys are already following my directions, like great teachers. Um, and we can all see each other coding live, which is amazing. So I also really love that I can highlight someone's text and I can start a thread and I can comment on my students if I need to tell them they made a syntax error or give feedback. This is a great way to do that. I can also observe and see where someone else is in my REPL. And I have the chat feature, which allows me to send something to the whole group or see everything that has been mentioned. So you'll notice Teams for Education is very similar to the REPL that you're seeing here. It is just within a privacy compliant setting with a lot more educator features. So I'm gonna stop talking because I want David to show you all the amazing things that you can do in Teams for Education. So David, I'm giving it to you. Thank you. And yeah, I, I just wanna start out by saying that a long time before I was working for Replit, I've been a massive fan of it. It changed the way that I taught everything. Um, from just using the simple, simple free version, because pre-Teams um, uh, for Education becoming a, a free product, um, it, it was a bit out of my price range as, a, as a, a secondary school teacher in Britain, but now we can all take advantage of it, which is great. But what I love about Replit is that there is no setup time at all. We all probably have spent time wandering around classrooms and setting up students' IDEs and workspaces and configuration files, and they've moved computers and broken something. And you, you know what that's like. You, you, I'm sure you do, you know the pain. Replit is sign up, sign in, boosh, you're done. There's no fuss at all. And when you do sign in, you see a page like this, which is the homepage where we can see our old, uh, our recent projects, create new, but I'm gonna take you to the Teams for Education page today to show you a little bit about that. Now it's on the little hamburger button on the left and we've got our Teams link there uh, and it loads our list of Teams. Now, clearly you'll probably have less Teams than I, than I do at the moment, but I'm gonna go into our Teams for Education 
uh, and show you how to create a brand new project. So you can see already there that I've got a few that have exist before, uh, but I'm going to go in and create a brand new one. And you get the option to pick any of our 50 plus, well, almost infinite now with Nick's programming languages. But I'm going to start with our most popular language, Python, and I'm going to create a project all about um, working out the area of a 2D shape. Just want to stick a bit of maths in there, don't we? A bit of cross curricular links. I can write my description there, but I'm not going to ASMR you by tapping my keyboard very loudly while my microphone's right here. And we can pick a unit as well so we can group things together. And we can even pick a due date. Now, I think it's probably only fair on you lot that I give you at least the evening to complete it. So let's call it Sunday. And I'm not taking any excuses from you, though. If the dog's eating the homework, that's just a bit tough. I'm sorry. We could even make these group projects and we could even allow self-grouping. There's a bunch of options, but I'm going to create one that simply goes to you, to the individual. And boosh, off I go there. And that will create for me the entire package that I need to create one assignment. Now, of course, what we've got here is our Python code straight away. And I want to put some boilerplate code into there. I could help the students out a little bit if I wanted to. And I could bring in some useful code to start off, but I'm not quite that nice. So I'm just going to bring in a Zelda meme and let the students get on with it. So, you know, I feel a bit bad, but let's get them typing into that. That's what the student will see the moment they open their assignment. They'll see this. But you also need to give them some instructions. And you probably don't want to be given instructions through comments in code because Let's be honest, they'll move them around, they'll change them and delete them. Replit has a beautiful function that allows us to bring in lesson content. And there's a button here just for us to add it. So let's do that. Now, straight away, it's added two major files for us, an instructions markdown file. Now, hopefully you've used markdown before. I love it. It's just plain text that renders really nicely. This is the preview window on the right here. That's what the students will see as well as the Python file when they start their assignment. But I'm just gonna delete that a minute. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to bring something into the world from that. So I'm gonna start, yeah, I, I typed that really quickly, didn't I? Yes, shortcuts are great. Uh, but <laughs> I brought in the start of my instructions for my students and you see there, I've got a nice clear description that goes through it. And, you know, maybe I wanna bring in a picture. Now, you, you, if you've used Markdown before, you know that bringing in pictures is a bit of a faff. Well, some of our engineers at Replit have done this beautiful thing. And I can literally paste an image in or drag and drop it. I know you're thinking that is worth it just for the time saving in itself. And that's why I do all my writing in Markdown Replits now. So I've got my lovely meme in there that gets the student a bit more excited. And I'm going to finish off my assignment with some tasks, something for them to do, because we're not just writing this for the sake of it. It's not just us chatting to ourselves, is it? So I'll bring in that lesson plan there. Uh, sorry, I'll bring in the rest of those instructions. And you'll see that the way Markdown works, I can bring in examples of code and we get syntax highlighting. Um, I've got my questions here. And in this scenario, I'm asking my students to build a very simple Python file that allows us to type in the type of shape and then gives us the area. There's also a third part, which has given us an error message, which simply says error if they do that. Now, what I love about Replit, of course, is that as I've been doing this, it's been automatically saving in the background. As Brittany said at the start, this is like Google Docs for coding. As I type, it saves. No more do you have to worry about students who turn each other's computers off or mess around or the internet connection going, losing work because it saves as they go. Since I've started using Replit years ago, we haven't lost a single line of code. And I don't know how many other teachers can say that. That is a real, real win as far as I'm concerned. Um, we've also got auto history. So up here, this little history button gives you the history of the REPL. And that saves every so often. And we can go back in time and look at the differences and, and restore previous code. And of course, if you really want to be fancy, we've got GitHub integration for version control as well. So a bunch of cool stuff there. But if you didn't feel like pulling all this stuff together yourself, well, we also have a curriculum hub where some of us have already written entire schemes of work, entire lessons and resources 
in this style that you can simply import into your own courses. It is absolutely the best time saver in the world. There's also a lesson plan file. This lesson plan file is something that only the teacher will be able to see and is really useful if you're sharing classes or if you're writing some notes for yourself that you want to come back to at a later date. And again, Bosch, pop a lesson plan in there. But I tend to put my common misconceptions in there. It's just remind myself of the things that I might want to be talking about. Now, at this point, we are in the, in the mode where we could probably push that out to students. And this publish project button would do just that. But don't you as a teacher hate marking? Don't you spend most of your life staring at students' work and ticking things? Well, there's one brilliant feature of Teams for Education that's going to save you hours, which is unit testing. Yes, unit testing, it is amazing. And we could do real unit testing. We could learn how to do unit testing programmatically in the language you're working with and add those in. But for those of us without that much time in our busy lives, the standard input output tests are really useful. I'm gonna create a quick one here. I'm gonna click at, create one that does the rectangle. Input is just the input that I would expect to type in to get the output and the output is what would be expected. Now, as I put these on separate lines, these will be put into different input statements. So there's more than one input, and it really doesn't matter what they say in those input statements. It'll type in rectangle first, press enter, 5.0, 10.0. Why floats, you, you, you ask me? Well, I sneakily put the fact that it must be a decimal number in the description so that the students have to actually read it rather than just tapping in int like anybody. There's one extra superpower, though. You've probably used similar things like this before, and you've had students moaning at you because they want an exact match, capitalization and everything. Well, the compatibility mode here only looks to see if the output exists anywhere on the screen, which is brilliant, because no matter what comedy japes students are getting up to, no matter what capitalization or spelling mistakes they make in the output, I just care about that. And boom, I've done one. Let's do a quick triangle test, and I'll be fast with this because hopefully the fact that I've got them all copied into memory will uh, sort it out for you. And also, I didn't really want to do the maths of a triangle in my head. Uh, we'll put it into compatibility mode again, and I'll add one more test just for the error message, and that will be that uh, my program that I've asked the students to write only supports um, two types of shapes, but... Let's see what a decagon does. Decagon, as we all know, 10-sided shape. I would expect there to be the word error in there because that's what I've asked for. My tests there are done and can be automatically run by the student. Again, if I'm happy at this point, I can click publish, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Let's jump back out to the Teams for Education page and I am going to go down here, click on the three dots, and I'm going to create a solution. And there's some other bits in here I just want to quickly mention. I can share it to Google Classroom. I can share a link to my students. I can embed it directly in another web page. I can edit, copy, delete all the standards. But creating a solution is absolute genius because what I can do here is place the exact perfect solution that I want inside the file. So if I go and type in the perfect solution, which again, wait until you see the speed at which I can write this code. You ready? You ready? Boosh. There we go. And I can also run the unit test myself to make sure that I haven't made a cracking mistake. So let's run it. And you can see there that I've passed all the tests. Brilliant. This is my exemplar code. This is the perfect one. I'm going to update my solution with this button on the right hand side here. And you'll see the beauty of it. Now I can give my solution after they publish it, after they submit the work. I'm not going to do that because I know that my students, somebody in the class is going to click submit just to see the answer and share it with everyone else. So I'm not going to do that. But those that have done the work and passed the tests, they can see the perfect solution. And after the due date, if they haven't quite got all the tests done, well, I'll let them see it as well. Boom, they've got access to that. Let's jump back now and let's publish that so a student can see it. And you might be at this point thinking, well, how do I get students into it? It's nice and easy. At the top here, we've got a manage team members option. You could, if they've got an existing Replit account, just invite them. However, the much, much more powerful thing is this sign-up link. If I copy that here, we've got a team invite. 
And I can tick this box here so that we don't collect names or emails and we have complete privacy for the students. That is really powerful. The privacy and the join link so we're not collecting any information that we don't want to have is great. Now, for those of us of a certain age, you could put a CSV file in there if you wanted, or if you're integrated with Google, invite directly via Google Classroom. I've used all these methods. The moment they're in, they're in, and you're in a good place from there. Before I move on to showing you how a student would work, I'm just going to check with Brittany. Are there any questions you want me to answer at this point, Brittany? Okay, a question just came in. Is there a tutorial on unit testing? Oh, I can answer that. I will put the doc for that in the chat. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A or in the chat. But I think right now we're good. Brilliant. Well, I'll do my magic powers then. And I'm going to now pretend to be a student. I know what you're thinking. Not many students, Mr. Morgan, have a lovely head of hair like you. And I agree. So let's use the power of Doctor Strange to Use the eye of Agamotto to send us back in time a little bit. And Bush, I know what you're thinking. The hair's grown back. How young does he look? Boy, oh boy, these filters on these new iPhones are amazing. Yep, I'll agree. I'm in a student account now. I'm in my student account. And you'll see that the project has popped up. So I'm going to start the project. Maybe I should have put a voice filter on there to prove that I'm a student at this point. A nice, nice high pitch one. You'll see as I load, it tells me there are three unit tests. Great. So I know what I've got to do and I can immediately get to work. My instructions have loaded on the side here. I can read these and I can work. If I click run, it'll jump straight to the console for me so I can see the output. There's no messing around. There's no needing to explain this. Now, again, this student has the ability to type unbelievably quickly. So go on, student. Off you go. Boosh. Well, Let's try those unit tests, because as a student, I was very confident in myself. Uh, oh, oh, no. So I've passed the error test, but I failed the triangles. Let's have a look what it says. Well, it's giving me the error. Oh, an error. OK, fair enough. It's giving me an error. Well, you know, I'm a bit stuck. I'm a bit stuck. I'm going to ask my teacher for some help. On the right hand side there, this little purple chat bubble lets me talk. Oi, Mr. Morgan. I'm a bit stuck. Fantastic. All right. OK, so they've asked for help. What can we do? Well, let's get that Dr. Strange magic back out and become the teacher again. And let's see what's going on. Well, I can view my submissions here so I can see which students are working on it. And I can see that this student is working on this REPL, hasn't submitted it yet. So let's jump into that and see what's going on here. Because, of course, the other superpower of REPLIT is the community aspect, is that multiplayer that you guys have been playing with just now as you've been adding to that. And the same superpower is now in this by default. I can go in and I can see there's a comment for me. What has my student said? Oh, bit stuck. Could have been a bit nicer to me, but let's have a look. Now, I think I can see the problem here. I think that this student is not casting any of his inputs as floats. So what I'm going to do very quickly is show him an example of how to do that. I'm going to type directly into his code. And this is changing live on his end as well. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight those lines. I'm going to right click and I'm going to start a thread. This is an inline comment. Let me do that again, sorry. This is an inline comment for that exact bit of thing. So I'm going to explain what's happening to the student. You weren't Casting as floats. Here's an example. Try it for yourself on line 10 and 11, which that's gone back to the student now. So, Dr. Strange, do your magic. Let's become the student. Oh, look at this. I've got an inline comment and the changes have happened. Brill, sir, as many of my students might say to me. And then the student goes and gives it a go themselves. Well, let's pop that in there. Pop that in there. And of course, I can run this in the console myself to see it working, but it's just run the unit tests. Oh, fantastic. I'm happy with that. Now it's passed all the tests. I'm going to submit. Yep, I'm happy to submit. And my teacher can do the marking. And at this point, back to being a teacher again, let's see what that looks like from our end. 
So if I view submissions, I can see that they have actually submitted it. They've got a date. I'm gonna go back to the dashboard as well because I also wanna show you this project overview button here, which allows me to see everyone in my course and how far they've gone. Uh, you can see that my student has submitted it to me uh, and they've completed that test. Let me refresh that, sorry, because that's giving me the old version of the page. Uh, and with that done then, once I know the student has um, submitted some work to me and I need to mark it, I can go into it and have a look myself. So let's jump in. Let's view the REPL just as we did before. And now it's submitted. I've got these options on the left-hand side here. I've got an option to mark it as reviewed. So we can just do a normal code review. We can run it. We can test it. We can check that the unit tests have been completed upon that code and we're happy with it. I can go in and change it or comment it. And again, inline comments or even just chat comments here. Um, I can mark that as resolved just like you would in any other documents. And I'm just gonna pop here. Now, well done. Uh, you used the casting structure well. At that point, that comment's gone back to the student. And what I want to do then is go back to my Teams tab and mark it as reviewed. So that says to the student that I've done it, I've seen it. I can go back to my submissions then, and I can see that it's reviewed. From a student's point of view then, they can see that it's been reviewed. If I go back to the, um, the main page that the student would see, they can see that it's been reviewed by my teacher, and I've got that many marks because I've checked the automated testing. I know exactly what I'm gonna get. We can then view their grades. Back to our dashboard, Back to our project overview. There we go. And we can go through there then and see students' grades, which I seem to be having a bit of an issue with mine at the moment, sorry, because I've done this about four times today and uh, confused it. But uh, you can go through and see the amount of tests that have been run correctly by each student and automatically get that mark for your mark book or for whatever, whatever else you want to use it for. Honestly, Teams for Education is an amazing product. And we haven't had time to do anything other than the very, very simple overview today. All we've really done is touch the surface of it. And I'll show you one or two things else that I think are amazing because some of the new features that have been built in are absolutely fantastic. For instance, if I want to work out what this bit of code does and I'm a student and I'm struggling, well, if I right click, I have an option in here to uh, start my thread and just talk to my teacher and ask. And that goes straight to us that we can get some information on that. All of that is just so powerful. I can't tell you how, how much time I've spent just in the comments of these talking back and forth with the student. It is so, so good to have inline commenting in code and the multiplayer feature so that if they don't understand, I can just go straight in and tap on that same code. It is fantastic. Now we've got lots and lots of documents and stuff ready to go if you would like a bit more. Uh, but aside from that, one of the things we'll be doing over the next few months as the product uh, starts spreading a bit wider is we'll be doing a bit more work on workshops and things to allow you to access a how-to guide and get your skills up in this. But the thing to do is go and try it. Go and set yourself up with the team. Go and pop your students in it. Go and try the automated marking. Because once you do, you won't go back. You really won't. I've said multiple times, if Replit ever disappeared, I think I'd have to stop teaching. Because there is nothing that will take me back to the world of manually installing IDEs on Windows computers in classrooms. <laughs> I'm done. Back to you, Brittany. <laughs> we have a few questions. Thank you so much for all of that. One person, Joe, was asking, what is the best way to see if a student has um, left a comment for you? How do you make sure you see all students' comments without having to open up all the well, I. Uh, that's that's reasonably straightforward because up here on the little notification bell, you'll see that as soon as a student leaves me a message, it pops up on here. So 
I get the notification straight up in my interface the moment I load it up. Every day when I load Repit up, first thing in the morning, I find a bunch of notifications and I go through and I click on them and they take me right to the REPL so I can go in, see that comment and I can action it straight away. It's really, really, really nice. They're not hidden away, they're there for you. The only thing you will have to get used to is seeing quite a large red number on this little bell icon, which if you're like me, you need to deal with that really quickly. But that number is there to show you how much, how many comments, how many students have worked on it. And actually, it's really, really nice to know that you know you've you've left it overnight because you've gone gone to bed early because you've had a hard day. And when you wake up in the morning, there's 40 comments because a bunch of students have been coding away throughout the night. It's lovely. Um, David has a question about student grades and accessing them. He wants to know if there's a shortcut or an easier way that you use to access student grades. Oh, well, so I've been trying to show you that, but because I've been playing with this all day, I think I've broken something <clears throat> on my end there because I've added the same um, the same activity so many times. I think I've confused my um, web browser. But what you get here usually is you get the amount of input output tests as a number here. You also get a progress percentage because the progress is the amount of activities that have been completed, the amount of tests. Um, so what I tend to use is whereas before I would have given a question maybe I said this question's worth eight marks because there are eight skills I want to see. Rather than doing that, I write eight unit tests to test those skills. And then the marks can just be pulled straight out as a CSV file and we can use that. We've got an export button here. So I usually dump it out into a spreadsheet, apply my little calculation to give them a grade and off we go. But sorry, this is my fault for practicing my demo too much and not clearly breaking something. Um, some people are asking about tutorials. I am going to put some more things in the chat. I've also pinned our community page. That is an amazing place to get feedback from other teachers and to collaborate. And I'm also going to link our docs as well. And you can also reach out to us via email. And we are always working on creating more videos and documentation for you. So you don't have to do any extra work as teachers. You do not have extra time for that. And please oh, do have a look. Tutorial. Okay, Sorry. we will, we will okay. keep that in mind. Please do have a look at the um, curriculum aspect as well. Uh, I know I mentioned it very quickly earlier, but there are a bunch of brilliant um, schemes of work, areas of learning, whatever you want to call them in different programming languages. Clearly Python is, is, the, is the most popular, of course it would be, but there's a bunch there that you can use to automatically bring stuff in. So if I go to uh, Python for GCSE there, which might be written by a certain old gentleman talking to you right now, we can have a look at a bunch of lessons, a bunch of examples, um, and we can see the sort of things that they'll be learning about, and we can just push that straight into our classroom or import them ourselves. So you don't have to do all this work yourself. You could bring in a few of these lessons and see how they work for you. Minimal effort to see what those returns will be. Someone else has a question about unit tests. Are unit tests lockable? I've had students change tests before. Um, I've not experienced them being changed within Replit. I've certainly written my own unit test code in the pre-Replit days and had students just hack into them and, and mess around with them. There are, of course, ways of fooling the unit test, but that's the point of the code review is that it doesn't just take the automated testing for granted. It allows you to go in and check that they haven't just hard-coded the answers to the questions in the tests, because we've all seen that happen as well. Um, so I think that's something that we might need to just double check and get back to you on, but I've never seen that happen uh, in all the years I've been using it. Trevor wants to know, can students highlight a particular problem in their code to make it easier for the teacher? And I think someone else had a similar question about um, just how to keep comments from students organized so you can see them all. Okay, so well, the, the, yeah, well, the, the easiest thing is that the, the chat actually 
groups the comments together. So if I were to highlight this chunk of code, uh, this is what I was trying to show earlier, sorry, and I have to start a thread on that. You'll see that what the, um, uh, the, the, the thread, the little purple button on the corner, shows us that chunk of code. And in fact, the highlighted code is color coded as well. So if a student's stuck on a bit of code, all they need to do is highlight it and add a start a thread from that point, and they get exactly what, what you're asking for there. It's, it's easy for the teachers to look at that and see it. In terms of managing the comments from individual students, aside from seeing them up here in your um, little bell icon up there, I go straight to the thread because it separates the comments. I'll pop another one down here, something like, you know, um, you like my emoji and a silly question you get but you'll see there that they're actually really nicely organized and if i click on them i can just directly type the answer back there and you can see that that exact piece of code is highlighted for me when that happens so it is very easy to organize all the comments from a particular student um, and using your bell icon to identify which comments have come in and which are new David, they want to know your Twitter. You're inspiring, as I told them you would be. <laughs> um, so they want to know um, your Twitter. I'll put your email on there, but they want to know your Twitter. Yeah, well, if, if you want me on Twitter, I'm at Lesson Hacker. Um, yeah, I've got a cool one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but please yeah, please do tweet me or, or follow or have a chat. I, we can discuss anything ref that you want or anything nerdy or just reminisce about the days when we used to teach Java or PHP. Oh. Sorry, okay, I'm just having a second. Somebody wants to know about packages, and I um, packages are awesome. Can you do like a really brief overview of how you import them, what they are? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go to the student account because it's it's so simple. The packages the, we just have a button for them. Uh, you know, there's no uh, Python wise, there's no pip install or anything like that. You literally just look for the package and it's there. So um, I yeah, I can't think of well. NumPy is there straight away, uh, but let's have a think. What, what do we have? Well, we have REPLs with Tkinterin and stuff like that that are all, it will show the graphics as well. Um, but let's have a look for, I don't know, uh, let's just have a look for what sort of math packages we got. And you've got loads of them. And it's simple to install it. It's just, and this is always difficult doing a, uh, an install of a package as a demo, but I click the plus button and in it goes. And it's busy installing it in the background there. If you see the console, you'll see that it's busy working on installing that. But the nice thing is, when this REPL goes to sleep and wakes back up, the first thing it does is install the package and complete all the dependencies. It is as simple as clicking the plus button. I have had students do amazing far out things because they're not faffing with a package manager. They're not faffing with problems on the network or anything like that. They are simply clicking the install button and they're going from there. Um, it's brilliant. It's really, really nice. But there's other things we've got there as well. There's an in integrated database, so they don't have to install database packages. And it's a very, very nice, straightforward database that students can use as well. Um, and like I said, the version control, we can actually connect it to Git. So you can actually bring in Git repos yourself. So if you've got an existing one, you can push uh, and, and you know do all the nice stuff that you would do with Git directly from there. And that's as, a, as an extension to the history feature that's already built in. Thank you all so much for joining. Oh, they want your, can you put your Twitter handle in the chat, David, so they have it? Yes, I will. I'll do that now. But thank you all so much. I know we've gone a few minutes over and we want you to get to the closing keynote, but please um, email us for anything that we can do to help you and have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy everyone. <laughs>